Hello everyone, welcome back to Anonymous World. Hope you all are doing well. So today is day 13 of Advent of Cyber 4. So let's see what we have in day 13. Okay, so day 13 is packet analysis. Simply having a wonderful PCAP time. Okay, so we will learn about Wireshark today. Let's start our machine. Okay, so after receiving the phishing email on day 6 and then investigating malware on day 12. So yesterday uh, we were investi investigating malware. I was unable to upload the video. So sorry for that. So it seemed everything was ready to go back to normal. However, monitoring system started to show suspicious traffic patterns just before closing the case. So now Santa's SOC team needs help in analyzing these suspicious network patterns. So our learning objective for today learning what traffic analysis is and why is still matters fundamentals of traffic analysis essential wireshark features which are used in case investigation how to assess the patterns use additional tools to identify malicious addresses and help the elf team investigate suspicious traffic patterns okay so description is given about packets and packet analysis why do we need packet analysis so you can go through that so now points to consider when working with PCAP files. So there are various points to consider before conducting packet analysis. The essential points are uh, listed below. First one is network and standard protocols knowledge. Familiarity with attack and defense concepts. Practical experience in analysis tools. Okay, when the time comes to do packet level analysis, it might sound hard to implement a theory in the practice, but creating checklists and mini playbooks will make the analysis process considerably easier okay so a simple process checklist is given below uh, hypothesis packet statistics known services unknown services known patterns and at last environment analyst has to know the nature and dynamics of the working environment so we will be using uh, wireshark so a description is given about what is wireshark and uh, how to use it So Wireshark is an industry standard tool for network protocol analysis and is essential in, in traffic and packet investigation. Okay, so direct, uh, let's directly jump to questions. You can go through theory part on your own. Okay, so view the protocol hierarchy menu. What is the percent packets value the hypertext transfer protocol? Okay, so let's open our PCAP file. Great. Now we need to view the protocol hierarchy menu. So you can find that in, under statistics. Click on protocol uh, hierarchy. What is the percent packets value of the hypertext transfer protocol? So here is hypertext transfer protocol. So, so the percent value is 0 0.3. Okay. Now view the conversations. Navigate to the TCP section. Which port number has received more than 1000 packets? So we can close this. Again, uh, conversations can be found under the statistics section. Go to conversations. So you can see uh, two IP addresses given. Uh, one IP address is given address A, which, all, uh, which are all same. And then address B, so conversation is going on. Uh, transfer of packets from a to b uh, bytes a to b from b to a let's navigate uh, go to tcp so which port number has received more than 1000 packets so we can see port uh, 3389 has received 1125 packets now what is the service name of the protocol protocol that received more than 1000 packets okay so we need to find the service name Okay, so 3389 is probably RDP. You can confirm it. Okay, so yeah, 3389 is for RDP. <coughs> now filter the DNS packets. What are the domain names? Enter the domains in alphabetical order and defanged format. Okay, so let's close this. Okay, filter the DNS packets. So just write here DNS and hit enter okay so there are four results 
and uh, we need to enter the domains in alphabetical order so you can see there are two domains tdn.bandit.hm and the best festival company.hm okay so alphabetically best festival company will come first so best festival company and dot uh, thm but we need to enter that in defined format so we will be using square brackets for dot and thm and then cdn dot thm again in defined format Now filter the HTTP packets. What are the names of the requested files? Enter the names in alphabetical order. Okay, so filter the HTTP files. You can so there are two files of uh, mystery gift.exe and favicon.io. You can also get this result by uh, filtering out uh, get requests. So for that you can use http dot request dot method is equal to get. So there are two equal to get. So you can see there are two get requests. First one is requesting mystery gift dot exe and the other one is requesting favicon dot ico. So we got our answer favicon dot. ICU and mystery gift. <coughs> uh, it was mystery gift or TXE, but I missed why, but still it accepted the answer. Now, which IP address downloaded the executable file? Enter the answer in defanged format. IP address source is 10.10.29.186. So it's 10.10.29.186. Then you can see. Now, which domain address hosts the malicious file? Enter your answer in defunct format. So uh, we need to find the domain name. So what you can do, you can go to view, then name resolution, and then resolve network address. So now you can see cdn.bandit.thm was hosting that mystery.exe file. Okay. Now what is the user agent value used to download the non-executable file? So non-executable file is servicon.ico. Uh, click right click on that packet and then go to follow then follow the tcp stream so we we need to give the user agent so our user agent is name http client 1.68 great now export objects from the pkf file calculate the file hashes what is the sha2256 hash value of the executable file let's go back uh, go to file then go to export objects then select the protocol so we need to choose HTTP uh, let's save all <coughs> okay so it is saved I think Let's go to desktop. Okay, so you can see two files are now downloaded favicon.icu and mystery gift.exe. So let's get the SHA256 value of this mystery gift.exe. Open in terminal. So you can use SHA256 sum and followed by file name. Great, so this is my required hash.
Okay, now search the hash value of the executable file on virus total. Navigate to the behavior section. There are multiple IP addresses associated with this file. What are the connected IP addresses? Enter the IP address defang and in numerical order. Okay, so let's go to virus total. Uh, search for the hash Okay, 20 security vendors and no certain boxes flag this file as malicious Okay, let's go to uh, behavior section Kappa I think yesterday room covered this with Kappa Uh, what we needed to give uh, what are the connected ip addresses enter the ip addresses defined and in numerical order okay okay so here are ip addresses there are four ip addresses and we need to give them in numerical orders okay so in defined order so let's go to cyber chef to make it a bit easy so first okay so let's defang these ips comma okay so you can select defang ip addresses wait okay the then the second one 20.99.184.37 Okay, then we have 23.216.147.76. And then at last, 8.8.8.8. .8 okay, so this is our IP address. <coughs> okay, so I think we need to give only 4 TCP. So let's delete the UDP one okay great so if you like working with wireshark we have a comp uh, they try may have a comprehensive module on this helpful tool here so if you want to deep dive the network security and traffic analysis module is waiting for you so that's it for day 13 i will see you guys tomorrow in day 14 till then keep learning <laughs>